433 megahertz or A68 megahertz for mesh tastic. Well, legally you can use either, and the debate will go on and on and on. Because quite frankly, it depends where you are. People say, well, 433 will go further. But A68 has a higher ERP rating. Your estimated radiated power is higher, assuming you're not fiddling the figures. And I've seen people saying, well, you can turn the power up. <laughs> you think you can, you can turn the number up. I very much doubt you'll get more than 100 milliwatts out of any of the current boards. But feel free to try it. But don't be surprised if your signal starts distorting and creating spurious emissions. These are about every five or six seconds, which is way more frequent than it would be on Meshtastic. And that could be the way you live, other people are using Meshtastic, and it's all the thing. But certainly where I live, it's pretty quiet, and I'm sat on top of a hill, so I can probably pick up on 433 megahertz for about 30 miles. Now, I'll own up straight away, I live half a mile from a hospital, and the chances are their paging systems are chirping away merrily on 433 megahertz. So yeah, you can see these and the people unlocking their cars and possibly the odd smart meter ringing home to its base station. Because even if it's working on 2G, it has to get the signal from the meter under the stairs or whatever. Oh, look at this now. It's going crazy. But none of this is meshtastic, in my opinion. You know, there may be the odd one that sneaks in here. Which could uh, improve the display a bit. Change the decoding on it. It does seem to be able to change the uh, the peaks on it. That might show up a bit better. So there's a, a whole heap of activity. Now bear in mind, if you are injecting mesh tastic into this. And there's a possible mesh-tastic signal. You're going to be fighting against all this ISM equipment. Both bands are allocated for ISM, but 433 is the primary one. Mesh-tastic 868 is the primary one. And look at that activity now, it's crazy. If you're trying to transmit 100 milliwatts. ISM devices can actually transmit up to 40 watts of power. Now that would normally be using highly directional antenna to get information from one hospital to another and there it freezes again. But, so you'd be fighting against all these devices is what I'm the point I'm trying to make. And people potentially with 40 watt transmissions. So how does that compare to what A6A looks like? Let's have a look. Okay, so we're on 869525, which is long, the long fast frequency. We'll just give it a minute. Now, let me change antennas in fact. Okay, so the Diamond X50, it works on 144 MHz and 433, 434, the 70 centimeter amateur band. Uh, and I've just turned off one of my nodes, but uh, I don't think this is a mesh tastic signal unless I've left MQTT turned on. That would be interesting. Okay, just checking, I have got MQTT turned off. So that's not my data. That burst there is mine almost certainly off my base station. So that's people pinging in the area in the last few minutes. Sorry, I'll do it on obscured. Obviously yeah, man, is me. East Middle is Meshtastic for the Facebook group. So, same sort of thing, we've got about a megahertz wide band in the UK. And you can see the sort of signals that are occurring, they're very short bursts. Basically, it uses a system called time interleaving so that they don't transmit at once. Word amateur radio tends to transmit on, and transmit and receive on the same frequency which is simplex, or transmit and receive 1.6 MHz apart, which is duplex, but have the band in use all the time. Uh, 
digital messaging systems like MQTT and LoRa, which are both based on the same system, and that's why you can use it for either, uh, just do these little bursts. And there you are, that's what the activity is looking like. And if I just tune down a bit, see who else is out there. Not a lot down there. Probably went too far. Because the very weak signals have turned the gain up quite a bit, there's one. You can hear it when it comes in. You have the patience to wait long enough. You know. There's not much to hear, to be honest. But that's the sort of level of activity. Yeah. And again, we're not the only people on here. Somebody somewhere is sending some things out. So 525 would be long fast. And they're chunnering away there. Maybe somebody's got MQTT turned on. And that's why he's doing such regular signals. And that would be a classic example of why I don't really recommend it. But uh, it's interesting stuff. So it's definitely a quieter band. And with the right antenna, uh, which could be a fraction of the size of what it should be for 433, shouldn't have any difficulty getting out at all. So the other thing I just out thought would have a look at is, all this stuff really is based around the old pager systems. What does that look like? So I'm going to switch back to a different antenna. What am I on there? A. So I'm back on the DX50 now. Make the bandwidth a bit wider. With a little bit of patience. There's one. This is what it sounds like. Now that's probably a, uh, a what's his name metering system pager. This is my typical thing. That's your epoxide pager. So Poxac is Post Office Code Standardisation Advisory Group. Wasn't thought up by a committee at all, honest. And that's what it looks like amplified. So if I can tune in properly on that. You'll be able to see the audio spectrum up here. There you go, quite an obnoxious noise. And that's basically shifting two tones at 1200 Hz and 2400 Hz. And the rate at which it switches between them can vary a lot. They use a lot of different speeds from very low ones up to quite high ones as the system's evolved over 40, 50 years. And it really is an old system, developed by the post office originally. 
and there are multiple encoding systems. So you can hear quite a difference there. That's more typical of what they use these days. But they all exist. So these pages used to be used by doctors and the ambulance service to direct them to customers, patients. And it was unencrypted, it was completely in the clear. Which meant anybody could eavesdrop on it and I used to, and you could see patients, medical conditions, and mobile phone numbers and addresses. And they clamped down on it after GDPR, and it took them a further two years to encrypt the whole system and get rid of the unencrypted one. So you'll be, you'll be happy to know that they're no longer transmitting your details in the clear when you have a heart attack. But uh, that's what it looks like anyway. <laughs>